throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be, of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world, explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. Stories of mythology often center around human characters and supernatural beings, such as gods, spirits, and monsters. Yet there are other creatures that play a major role in folklore and legends. Ones that are not mythical or supernatural in nature. And ones that live in our own world. Animals. There are thousands upon thousands of species and subspecies of animals living on Earth. In forests both temperate and tropical. In grasslands, polar regions, deserts, on mountain peaks, inland waters the depths of the ocean, and even in human settlements. Animals have been an important part of human lives since the Stone Age, acting as companions, as sources of food and supply, and even as threats to one's safety. Being so close to humanity for so long has led to mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and even insects, taking on a multitude of different roles in mythology. As guides, as tricksters, as monsters and obstacles, protagonists and antagonists, and sometimes even as the very gods themselves. In the earliest days, animals were greatly associated with higher powers, often serving the gods as their messengers, spies, or symbols. Many gods of the Greek pantheon had animals deemed sacred to them, such as eagles, dolphins, lions, bulls, peacocks, and more. In more than one story, Zeus would take the form of various animals when dealing with mortals, such as a swan or a bull. In Norse mythology, Odin was always accompanied by a pair of ravens named Hugin and Munen who is said to fly all over the world and deliver information to the Asgardian king. Aztec mythology tells of the dead being guided through Mictlan, the underworld, by a spectral dog. Inuit mythology tells that all marine life, a cornerstone of survival in the Arctic, controlled by the sea goddess Sedna. Kernunos an ancient Gallic Celtic figure whose mythology has been lost to time, is frequently depicted in art as being surrounded by forest animals, while he himself is depicted with the antlers and other features of a stag. But animals in myth were not always just in the service of the gods. Sometimes they were the very gods themselves. Many hunter-gatherer cultures across the six inhabited continents revered animals as deities, due in no short part to animals being crucial to their survival. Many native cultures of Australia worshipped a being that took the form of a gigantic rainbow serpent who brought the rains and controlled fresh water of the world. In Egyptian mythology, Many of the gods were depicted as animals, such as Sobek, in the form of a crocodile. The same goes for many gods of the Hindu faith, such as Ganesha, who bears the likeness of an elephant, and for many Maori gods, such as Kauhu, who bears the likeness of a shark. But these choices were not done at random. The portrayals of these beings reflected that particular culture's views of the animal in question. For example, jackals and wild dogs in general were said to lurk around cemeteries in Egypt, hence why the Egyptian psychopomp, Anubis, was portrayed as a wild dog. Many creatures and monsters of mythology are based off of real-life animals or were given animalistic features, 
many of which also reflect how people perceive the animals that lived around them. Kiowa legend tells of a gigantic grizzly bear who chased seven maidens to a large stump, leading to the creation of Devil's Tower and the Pleiades. The rock of Arabian lore is more or less a large bird of prey, magnified to a gargantuan size, able to pick up a full-grown elephant as easily as an eagle picks up a rabbit. Sometimes misidentification of real-life animals would lead to the creation of mythical creatures through word of mouth, such as the case for the manticore, a ferocious, man-eating monster native to India, said to have a man-like face, a reddish lion's body, a tail like that of a scorpion, multiple rows of teeth and an unearthly roar that many believe originated from the exaggerated and unreliable reports of a Bengal tiger. Some mythical creatures came about by imagining combinations of existing animals, such as the griffin of heraldic iconography, the chimera of Greek mythology, and even the Chinese dragon. Stories of humans shapeshifting into beasts or man-beast hybrids were also commonplace, blurring the lines between humanity and the animal kingdom, in horrifying ways such as the legend of werewolves and other were-creatures found across the world, and in fantastical ways such as the case of the Selkies of Scottish mythology. As time would go on, animals would become central characters within fables, once again reflecting cultural views of the animals in question, and often bearing distinctly human-like traits, such as curiosity, greed, cunning, bravery, perseverance, and sometimes even being downright heroic or evil. In Akan mythology, the spider Anansi shows a great deal of ingenuity, employing strategy and creativity in order to achieve the stories of the sky god and share them with the world. Yoruba mythology tells how elephants gain their long trunks due to the actions of a curious young elephant who stuck his nose into a snake hole. In medieval folklore, the character Reynard the Fox went on a series of misadventures, toying with other beasts for his own advantage, and using cunnings to avoid their retaliation. In Grimm's fairy tales, Little Red Riding Hood was preyed upon by a lone wolf who used trickery and manipulation, going as far as to dress as the girl's grandmother and lure her to his waiting jaws. Many of Aesop's fables have animals as the main characters, such as the lion and the mouse, or the tortoise and the hare. Many stories of Native American legend tell of the trickster figure Coyote, who used cleverness and careful planning to both benefit and hinder those around him, including stealing fire from the spirits in order to give to mankind. An Aboriginal Australian story tells of how a gigantic frog named Titilic drank all the water in the world, and only through the combined efforts of other animals of the outback did the waters get returned. The famous Russian parable of the scorpion and the frog featured the eponymous characters in a precarious situation where they must trust one another despite each other's inner nature. A primary objective for many of these animal fables, like many myths and folk tales, is to explain how the world came to be. From how the sun was created, to why snakes have no legs. Another objective for animal fables was to teach a valuable moral to the listener, such as being honest, warning of trusting strangers, or teaching not to take more than you give. This may be because animal fables can be easily understood in universal terms, 
observing how animal species relate to each other, rather than human groups in a specific society, making it easier for the listener to understand the characters' motives, even if they do not come from the same cultural background that the story originates from. From the earliest times, animals have always played a huge role in the lives of human beings, and as a result, animals of all shapes and sizes have appeared in the myths and legends of every culture on earth. They take the forms of gods or servants to the gods. They inspired monsters of all types. They have played the roles of companions, of enemies, of tricksters and guides to heroes, and even have appeared as the protagonists within their own fables. Animals continue to play a large role in modern fiction. In children's stories such as Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book, or Kenneth Graham's The Wind in the Willows. In adult fiction, such as George Orwell's Animal Farm. And in acclaimed movies, such as Disney's The Lion King. The impact that animals have on our history, on our mythologies, and on all of our lives cannot be overstated, nor can their importance to our planet be overlooked nor taken for granted. <laughs>